Hey everybody! In yesterday's video I mentioned that I have listened to four audiobooks in rapid succession, all on the topic of AI. And those books were Surveillance Valley, The Secret Military History of the Internet by Yasha Levine. Next was In the Age of Surveillance Capitalism, I cannot recite the full title from memory, but it's on screen over here, uh, by Shoshona Zuboff. Next came The Big Nine. Again, I don't have the full title at the ready, but the uh, author is Amy Webb. And just this morning, I finished up listening to AI Superpowers, and I think the full title there is um, China, Silicon Valley, and the New World Order. Does it? I don't know. I think that's it. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm going to be talking about just one of them today, and the reason for this is I'm going to do... Uh, I'm going to do a video on each one of these books, mainly for my own benefit, because having listened to them all back to back, the contents are blurring together in my mind. And if I don't do this now, then, you know, just a short time from now, they will all be one book to me, and I will not be able to pull out, you know, what came from where. So this is just a quick breakdown of um, basically what I got out of these books. And given that I've listened to at least three books, uh, maybe more since this first one I'm the, that I'm going to review, Surveillance Valley, uh, I had to actually go back and re-familiarize myself with the contents. And because I don't actually have a physical book or even, you know, an e-book, just the, uh, you know, the audio book, I went and I read some reviews, I read uh, some articles and some Wikipedia entries just to sort of get the contents, you know, refreshed in my mind. So Yash Levine is a, uh, he's an investigative journalist born in the Soviet Union, I'm not exactly sure when he moved to the United States, but surely Russian is his first language. English is a you know later acquired language. And it's really clear when you see him speak. Not that he has a thick accent or you know that he's um, not fluent, but he's just not a good public speaker. With a lot of the books that I'm interested in reading, I discovered that you know, if they did a book talk at Google that's like 90 minutes long, and I go and watch that, and then maybe I listen to an interview on Fresh Air or some other long-form interview, that that's almost as good as having read the book. And a lot of times, you know, I satisfy myself just with listening to that, you know, additional promotional material and skipping the book entirely. That would not work with this book, because Yasha Levine is just not an engaging speaker. He doesn't seem very organized. I just watched a talk by him this morning in which the Q&A portion was a lot fresher and easier to take than his prepared statements. They were just so slow and clunky, and his manner of speaking is just not very engaging. So you absolutely positively have to read the book. And he's not the, um, the reader of the audiobook. But he, by his own admission, he sets out with the book to tell a third history of the Internet. There's basically two popular histories of the internet, or origin stories, you might say, of the internet in the public imagination. One is that it was created by a bunch of, you know, acid-taking, long-haired, visionary, freaky types. And the other is that the military created it to be a sort of decentralized nervous system for command and control of society and military resources in the event of a nuclear war, that large portions of the network could be damaged or destroyed and it would still work. And there is some truth to both of these origin stories, but Levine wants to bring to light a third origin story, which is that computer and networking technology has always, always, I mean, he doesn't say this, but I'll say it, from the days of cuneiform on clay tablets, record keeping has always been used for social control and for marshalling and centralizing power, and information technology has been no different. Now, where Levine's uh, history gets interesting is when you know, he, he starts off telling about, you know, the, the pre-digital history, or I guess the, the pre-electronic history of computing, like with punch cards and whatnot, and how IBM supplied computing technologies to the Nazis to basically keep track of the death camps, you know, the Jews being hauled off and uh, disposed of in, in death camps. IBM assisted with that effort with their punch card technology. But he talks a lot about how in the 1960s, the uh, various intelligence agencies were looking to use information technology to fight the counterinsurgency in Vietnam, basically, and also to fight the protests at home, you know, the, the protest organizations. And, you know, we all know that the FBI and other organizations infiltrated peace groups or, you know, anti-war anti groups in the United States. They infiltrated, you know, black liberation groups and... Anybody who is uh, not satisfied with the, the status quo, uh, if they had any 
you know, consistently dues paying members, the people paying dues were probably spooks, probably infiltrators. Uh, we know that that happened face to face, but a lot of what motivated, you know, the funding, particularly the military funding for early computing, uh, was surveillance, you know, surveillance of the enemy, both outside of the United States and within, you know, all enemies, foreign and domestic. But the story gets interesting for me when the, you know, the spooky military um, line of descent and, you know, the acid dropping, uh, commune building, whole earth catalog reading crowd came together because when they came together, they got along really well, according to, uh, to Levine. Now, what I mostly remember from Levine's book is that early history of the internet, but then he spends a long time, and he's taken a lot of heat for this, I mean, received death threats and boatloads of abuse for saying that uh, the whole crypto movement, particularly with regard to Tor or the Onion Router and um, the phone encrypting app, what is it called, Signal, that these are bullshit. These are utter bullshit. And that really, uh, by a, a civilian adopting the uses of these technologies is just playing into the hands of the intelligence agencies. Um, I can't go into why that's the case in this video. If you're really interested, maybe I'll do a separate video just on that topic, but this is just a, a general overview. But uh, he also singles out for um, very long and extensive criticism, the crypto hero and blowhard Jacob Applebaum. So if Jacob Applebaum is a hero of yours, then this book will surely piss you off and you will probably be scripting your own death threats to Yasha Levine. But essentially, he makes the case that Jacob Applebaum is a paid shill for the intelligence agencies, that he has been receiving money from, you know, deep state spooky uh, organizations for many years now, and he has been doing their bidding in exchange for that money. And he goes, also goes on to talk about what a, you know, a sexual creep Applebaum has been, and probably still is. I mean, do leopards change their spots? Well, you know, maybe they do, particularly men as they grow older. The libido dries up a bit and their minds migrate into areas that were unavailable to them when they were, you know, con just constantly consumed with the need to have sex. Uh, that's nothing to do with this book. Total aside on my part. Also in this book, I wasn't really familiar. I'd probably heard the acronym before, but I didn't really know much about the uh, Broadcast Board of Governors. And uh, which is going under a new title now. I think it's called the USAGM, which is United States of America Game Master. No, it's United States Agency for Global Media, which um, is basically just a rebranded version of the BBG. It is an organization. It is a part of the U.S. government, which is directed toward controlling, you know, media conversations and public conversations around the world you know, controlling and directing for benevolent, for benevolent purposes, of course. About the only other thing that really stands out in the book for me in terms of, um, you know, what I found memorable were just some of the early players uh, in the development of ARPANET and, you know, later DARPANET and the Internet. Uh, most notably, I think, uh, J.C.R. Licklighter. And I, I don't remember what the J.C.R. stands for, that, uh, but his nickname was Lick, and he gets called Lick throughout the book. Um, somebody who was, you know, pivotal to the uh, getting these early intelligence agency projects that would become the Internet funded. So in, in going back to try to, you know, look at some sources to refresh my memory as to what the exact contents of this book were, there were some, some reviews on Amazon.com that I found helpful. And the ones that I found most helpful, I liked the book. I really, I found it you know, I found listening to it, I was going to say reading it, I didn't read it, I listened to it. Uh, I found listening to it to be worthwhile. The information that it provided, I think, has enriched my understanding of you know, where the internet comes from and what it does. He does go on to talk about, you know, more modern things like the role of Google and Facebook and Amazon and, and things like that in uh, basically serving the ends of the intelligence apparatus, you know, the, the national security state. But other books that I've read more recently than that go into that in more detail. So what I remember, so what I you know think I know from having listened to these books uh, mostly comes from the books that I read after Surveillance Valley. So for me, you know, the, the greatest value of this book was just the early history that it gives. You know, it is an alternative history. And it, it's not saying that either of the other two popular narratives are false. He's just saying neither one of them tells the whole story. So um, four bullet points for me on this book. One, computing technology and networking technology has 
always, always been used for social control and surveillance. Two, popular crypto tools like Tor and Signal are bullshit. If you think that you can install a couple of apps on your phone and suddenly you are invisible to Google and Facebook and Amazon and the NSA, you're stupid. You're just stupid. These technologies are built to collect information on you and report that information to big players. And there is not an app in the world that you can install on any device that will prevent that device from doing that job. The only thing that you can do to a device to prevent it from doing that job is to take a hammer to it. Three, Jacob Applebaum is a shill, a spook, and a creep. And for the uh, U.S. government's ambitions to control, you know, conversations taking place in the media, both, you know, broadcast, one-to-many media, and also social media globally, uh, it, it is an ongoing ambition of theirs to control that space and to manage the conversations taking place there in a surreptitious way. But I mentioned that you know, some of the, the most valuable perspectives that I got in the book came from people who gave it poor reviews. So if you go to Amazon.com and you look at the two-star reviews, there's a very long, very well-written review, which makes the argument that Yasha Levine is not technically competent enough. He doesn't understand the technology well enough to really separate fact from conspiracy theory and that he falls for you know a lot of the the conspiracy narratives which are very juicy and attractive to the imagination that somebody with more you know a more solid background in this technology wouldn't fall for and i thought that was interesting because one of the things that i learned about levine today was that he he started to go to school for computer science and he was two years into completing a bachelor of computer science when he dropped out to go do journalism so while he certainly is less conversant in tech issues than a lot of people working in the industry, he's far more competent and qualified to look into these issues than are most journalists, including most tech journalists. So the topic of who is qualified to even say what's happening in this field uh, is a pretty hotly debated topic, I think, and it's one that will become important when I get to the second to last book that I read in this sequence, which was The Big Nine by Amy Webb. Anyway, uh, tomorrow I will, unless something really juicy drops into my lap, I'll be covering the next book in the series, which is The Age of Surveillance Capitalism by Shoshona Zuboff. Thanks for watching. I will talk to you again tomorrow.